I am so pumped about today's video because in today's video, I get to play with fire! Hello! If you're new here, my name's Melissa, but if you are one of my subscribers and you've been around a few times, you already know that you can call me Missy. In today's video, I'm not so much playing with fire as I am bending it to my will, using it as a tool to create jewelry. Now, I'm not entirely new to making jewelry. I took a class at university, like, uh, nine or ten years ago. And in that class, I learned all kinds of things, mostly through the demonstrations, although there was a textbook, which I didn't buy because at the time, I had discovered that most of my art classes were like, you don't need the textbook, don't worry about it. If you haven't bought it yet, don't buy it. And this class never said anything, and so I was like, okay, maybe I won't buy it. And then I didn't buy it, and they did demos, but I didn't really understand everything that was going on. Anyways, I should have bought the textbook. <laughs> Aside from that class way back when, I also have attended a couple workshops where we made some bezel set silver rings. But this is my first time ever doing it at home. I finally have all the things that I need to make my own jewelry, so let's get into it. I am going to be making something for my husband for our 14th anniversary. I always like to look up the traditional gift and sometimes I'll get him something along those lines and sometimes I won't. I looked it up and the traditional gift is ivory and I just happen to have some human ivory right here. I have been saving this for a while and I've been wanting to make some jewelry with it for a while as well. So that's another thing I'm super stoked about. I also don't want to mess it up. I'm kind of nervous because it's been a while and I am inexperienced. I am but a babe. So here I have put together some steps of what I need to do. I've watched some YouTube videos to uh, jog my memory. And yeah, so my first steps are cutting out my shapes. The design calls for a cloud shape, so I'm going to start with a cloud shape, some raindrops, and I think a copper lightning bolt. Here it goes. So I had my plan of attack, but I needed to load my weapon. And as if a portend of things to come, I struggled with this. Finally, I realized that I needed to clamp in one end of the minuscule blade before proceeding to the other, and then finally, of course, tightening it all down. Yeah, that's the stuff. Okay. Lubricate it with some beeswax. Now we're all lubed up. Ew, gross. Got to draw a cloud shape on my metal. After looking through all of my drawers for a writing implement, I found this ballpoint pen that actually worked quite nicely and then it only needed to be rubbed out so I wouldn't have to worry about marks showing up on my finished piece. Next I needed to find some place to clamp my bench peg and I came up with this solution which is to use this cabinet door from my old house. I ended up remaking all the cabinet doors for the kitchen and I ended up keeping this one because of the creative urge to hoard things. Ain't she a beaut? <laughs> it's forbidden glitter. Oh, it's so beautiful. Now that my cloud shape was all cut out, I was ready to cut out some little raindrops. And I pulled out the tooth I had chosen for this project for a reference point. That way, all of the little charms that would hang from my cloud would be of a proportional size. Because you just know that when teeth do eventually rain from the sky, they will be a similar size to the water drops surrounding them. And I need this jewelry to be a realistic portrayal of this situation. The next little charm that I had planned for this was a little lightning bolt and I decided it would be cute to have it in copper wire. So I went ahead and bent some of that into a vague lightning bolt shape and then cut the wire. I never wanted to have to make this video, but I have to apologize. I lied to you earlier 
when I said that I had all of my supplies with me. I need my anvil and I need my files. So, BRB. At least I didn't lie about being RB because I was RB. And yeah, some of that is because it would be silly to edit a long pause, but I could have just left and come back another day and just not told you that it was a new day. But I didn't, which is just to show how sincere my apology was. Anyways, after filing down the edges of the cloud and flattening my lightning bolt, I was ready to go ahead and get to work on the bezel, which would end up holding the tooth. I wrapped my bezel wire around my tooth to get it the right size and then cut it out and then I had to file down the edge so that it would butt up against the other edge nice and tight so that I could get a good solder on it. And then finally, with that done, I was just about ready to use my fire. But first I just needed to lose a few chunks of solder in this pumice gravel stuff. Just look at me here, so hopeful that I would be able to just grab it off of that little pumice stone and be able to use it. So full of hope, so foolish. Yeah, it was gone. So I just cut myself a new chunk of solder and used that. Yay, it's fire time! First, you heat it up from a bit of a distance. You'll see that the flux starts to puff and then the solder will flow when you touch it with the blue flame, that little tip of the blue flame there. But I didn't heat my bezel wire evenly enough and the solder only flowed on one side of it. So that didn't work. It wasn't actually soldered together. I quenched it, I think I pickled it for a moment, and then I tried again. More solder, more flux, more fire. I do have to apologize again in this video because I did not do a great job at making my camera focus on all of these tiny things. I'm just not so used to having such small things that I need to film and it was really tough to make it focus on the right part of the video. Additionally, my fingers got in the way and my hands got in the way quite a lot. I need to work on framing. But hopefully I got enough good shots in there that you're able to see basically what my process was. Here I'm using some copper wire to make some designs for the cloud and then I just used that mallet to flatten everything out after it was bent so that it would sit nice and flat up against that silver cloud. Next it was time to sacrifice some more solder to the pumice gods while I attempted to get it situated on this rain cloud. Solder comes in three varieties, hard, medium, and easy. The hard one has a more difficult time melting and it needs to be hotter and all that jazz in order for it to flow. So when making a piece, you need to start with the hard solder so that when you move on to the other steps of creating your jewelry, you can use the medium and soft afterwards and then not risk melting that first solder job. As you can see here, the pumice gods did not accept my sacrifice at first. Uh, there are big chunks of solder there that didn't flow, but when I was doing the bezel, they smiled upon me. I love the sound it makes when it goes into the quenching pot. It's so satisfying. And here's my little bezel. It is that shape because I put it around the tooth before putting it on the metal. It's a new day and I need to cut out this extra um, metal around the bezel. I've got to add more solder to this, try and solder down this little bit of wire here, 
and uh, clean up some of these clumps, hopefully, because right now it's not looking too good. I replaced this with this uh, fire brick because I dropped a lot of solder into the gravel stuff. I did manage to pull those little bits of solder out when I was pulling the gravel out. This way when I drop solder, it'll just be really easy to pick it up and put it back on my metal piece. Let's just see where things take us. I think the gravel gods were mad that I removed their sacrifice because this morning was a real challenge for me. First of all, it was exceptionally difficult to figure out how to grip this little bezel so that I could saw it out of the surrounding metal pieces. I tried holding it with my fingers, I tried holding it with the pliers, I tried anchoring it to the bench peg by applying pressure into the center of the bezel. It was so annoying. I ended up with a bulge in the metal, so I tried to go ahead and file it out and that was taking a lot of time and it was difficult and it kept trying to file my fingernail, which I would like to keep, thank you very much. So then I pulled out my Dremel and I thought, hey, why not let's get stupid about this? And that's what I did. I have just been searching for that bezel that I made that flung out and I can't find it anywhere. So I'm probably just gonna have to make another one. First, I'm gonna work on this and then I'll get around to that because I just, I just don't feel, <laughs> I don't feel like fixing my mistake right now. So I'm gonna fix a different mistake. <laughs> so yeah, I returned to the cloud and that didn't end up working out so well. So I quenched it and put it in the pickle pot so that I could try again later and went back to fixing my bezel problem. I did everything the same way I had done previously, including the bad focus, apparently, with the camera. I guess I decided that the fire brick was probably acting as a heat sink and so the metal just wasn't getting hot enough for the solder to flow easily. So I tried putting it just in the pliers or tweezers or whatever. And I just went back and forth from the cloud to the bezel, from the bezel to the cloud. And there's my new bezel. It came out so much better than the first one. I was actually able to cut off all of the excess silver around it. So success, hooray. Then I pulled out the dapping block so that I could shape my raindrops because I didn't want them to just be flat raindrops. That's lame. So I wanted to give them some dimension and but then they had a little bit too much dimension. So I wanted to just flatten out the tips a little bit. And so uh, I don't know why, but I used the back end of the ball peen hammer instead of using the mallet that I had used earlier. Then after I liked the shape, I just finished it off by sanding down some of the rougher edges. Today, I have only a few things that need to be done in order to finish this. However, I still don't have my silver chain that I had ordered for this. They had said that they would be getting an order this week and I think they were gonna call or email. I've been checking my email. I haven't gotten an email. I've been checking my phone calls. I haven't gotten one of those either. So um, I don't know if my silver chain is going to be in this week, so I might have to just finish it whenever that comes in. Um, however, I can today still add, add a couple of rings to the back of this so that we can hang some chain off of it or hang it as a necklace. But yeah, it's, it's pretty close to being done. Um, so I guess I'm just gonna do the thing that I can do today on this and whenever the chain comes in, I guess I'll be able to finish it. Hopefully it is in before my anniversary, but we shall see. So I'm gonna put some rings on it and who knows what else I'll be able to get done today. 
First, I forgot to show you how the raindrop turned out, so there's that. And then I started making some of the jump rings. I had some silver wire that I cut and then I bent, and this is me just sanding down the edges so that the ends of the wire will lay flat against the back of my cloud. They would have had a much more graceful arch shape if I had had some uh, rounded needle nose pliers, but I worked with what I had. I wanted to see if I could solder them both at the same time, so I jerry-rigged this little setup to try and get both of the rings situated on the cloud at the same time, and it was quite the pain in the tuchus. But I did finally get it all set up and I got the solder in place and everything was good to go. And I started in with the fire at last. And as it turns out, it worked on one side and it did not work on the other side, so I had to do them individually anyways. Your chain has come, and with it has come the time to finish this. So this chain is quite thin and fine, which I was thinking would be nice for this delicate, just raindrop effect. But the other thing that I'm thinking about now is how to solder it together. Um, particularly of concern is soldering it to this bezel because it's gonna be the heavier thing. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what to do with that. If I can maybe get a couple of these links to ball up together, maybe that would make for a nice anchor point to then anchor it to that. So I'm gonna see what I can do. We shall proceed. <laughs> I began by trying to line up all of the little charms to see how long I wanted each of the segments of chain to be. But I think in the end I just kind of eyeballed it. But here you can see that after fluxing the chain it will just kind of ball up at the end. And so you end up with a little, a little chain with a little ball at the end of it. I sanded the little ball so I'd have one flat edge to sit on top of my bezel and then I prepared to attach it. One of the refresher videos that I watched showed this method for soldering some delicate pieces together, but on the first try I accidentally melted the chain. So yeah, I had to start over. That's a tweezer pull of shame. Here's trial number two, the flux flows, the thing goes down, a tiny bit more heat, and voila, a tweezer pull of victory. I tried to do the same thing with one of my little raindrops and shame. And then to add to my shame, I almost picked it up with my fingers while it was still hot. So I decided to try this other method where it was laying down next to each other and I had to move the solder in the middle of the process, but this one worked. Victory! When each of my charms were attached to chains, I was ready then to attach the chains to the cloud. As you can probably guess, in this whole chain situation, I was using the easy solder. And right about here, I lost another charm. I was running out of time and patience, so I cut my losses and let that charm go. After all, I still had a raindrop, a tooth, and a lightning bolt, so that was looking pretty nice. And I was ready to finish up the metal by polishing. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
am finishing up my jewelry project today. <laughs> it is no longer an ivory anniversary present because in the process of polishing, this very thin chain broke. And part of it was that it was weakened when I had soldered it. It was melted a little bit further down past where it was soldered on. But I think these are a lot more securely attached. Looking at the soldering points, it looks like those bits of chain were not melted or damaged in the process. So I still have a little rain cloud with a little raindrop and a little lightning bolt, and that's all there's going to be. However, I thought it would be fun since it's a rain cloud, we need to have it be darker. So I need to oxidize the silver. I read online that you can oxidize silver with boiled egg. Let's, let's oxidize this sucker. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to call you a sucker. You're not a sucker, you're a winner. Where did my electrical tape go? I must have left it out and it probably rolled away. Why do I have to be such a hurricane human? Ah, there it is. Okay, <laughs> I got my electrical tape. I'm thinking the electrical tape will be good because I don't think that it sticks too strongly and I can also like use my finger a little bit. I don't want to damage any more chain. off. I'm going to cut it up first rather than just smush it in there because I'm not a barbarian. should turn black and the copper should turn pink so we'll see how that looks in like an hour half hour or so probably it'll be closer to like an hour and a half or something like that but now I got to eat some of these other eggs <laughs> so this has been in this bag all morning I'm gonna pull it out, but I've already seen kind of what it looks like through the egg. Part of me wonders if it's not because like maybe the solder isn't picking up the patina. It's got egg on it. Let me just rinse it off. So this is what it looks like at this point. It's really black down here and it's less so up there. I'm wondering if the solder just isn't accepting the patina for some reason, but I would expect it not to affect the back because the back did not get solder all over it. So I'm going to grab another egg and peel it. And I just watched a YouTube video that showed that actually just the whites of the egg do better at giving the patina than the yolks. So this time I'm going to do another batch where it's just the whites of the egg and see if that doesn't fill out our black patina on the cloud. This time I went full barbarian on the egg and mushed it in the bowl. Although I did try to use a utensil a little bit, uh, my fingers were just a lot more effective. All right, now just to let it sit, um, I wonder if I put it outside in the heat, if that would help. So I'm gonna try and do that. My dearest avian flower, it is with a heavy heart that I send this letter. I have news from our mutual acquaintance, Egbert. Alas, we have lost another charm as our earnest Egbert attempted delivery of the amulet. Now our little silver cloud has but one little drop to display, and it mirrors the single tear I cried for our loss. Regards, the fish. P.S. I shall see you again presently at the presentation of the cloud.
there you go. They say every cloud has a silver lining, but if it's a silver cloud, it has a copper lining. And it doesn't rain human teeth, unfortunately. I would have filmed my husband's reaction, however, he did choose the design in the first place and I didn't tell him that I needed it to be a surprise so he did come in and watch me work on it so he saw the work in progress. It wasn't a surprise for him. He is being very supportive and saying that he loves it and I guess I just have to take him at his word. But I am going to return to this project and I am going to make him a necklace with a tooth dangle. I could just sit here and say that this whole thing was such a failure and part of me really thinks that but another part of me knows that failure is part of learning and I am not by any means an expert at silversmithing, obviously. And if only for the reason that I learned a lot, this project was a success. I'm actually pretty impressed with myself looking back now that I still have even one little charm still dangling off of my rain cloud. So I'll take my silver clouds and I'll take my copper linings and I will look forward to a brighter day. Thank you so much for watching to this point in the video. If you liked anything about that video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you would like to see more of what I do, I do art, I do crafts, I do home improvement projects, I do sewing projects, I'll do random other things. And so if you'd like to follow along, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and then I'll be able to see you in the next video. Bye. Before I get to work, I need to put my hair up into one of these super sexy, messy buns that I keep hearing about. <laughs> oh no, I just blew it out. Oh yeah. That's hot. But that is not enough. We must tighten it. See that? It's no good. No, but it's really hot. This leather vest is too much. Let's get you down here, sweetheart. We're doing a dance. We're doing it. <laughs>